Karen Gibson first worked with us back in the 1980s before doing his degree. Now, after some time in the United States, he's been back for a few years running an interesting project. In the winter of 1999, at an isolated farm near La Mancha, just south of Edinburgh, he was trying out a new kind of wheel for a strange vehicle, the Mark III Dervish. Like the celebrated whirling dancers, this machine goes round and round in circles. The new wheels were designed to get a good grip on soft ground without digging in. The Dervish was designed to blow up anti-personnel mines. In the mid-1990s, Stephen Salter had started to think about faster and cheaper ways to get rid of the world's 100 million or so mines, which were responsible for killing, or maiming, over 20,000 people a year. He thought of a tough, cheap machine that would spiral along, covering every possible spot of ground, with thin, blast-proof wheels that would have enough pressure to detonate buried mines. The Mark I dervish seen here in the spring of 1997 had only two wheels. The third point of ground contact was through a pair of alternating spikes. By changing from one to the other, every half circle, the machine would slowly advance. However, the spikes tended to get dug in and we had to change the design. Four months later, the three-wheeled Mark II dervish was ready. It used a trailing bogey wheel to give it a sense of direction and to steer the wheels so as to make the machine move steadily in a fixed direction. This wasn't a completely practical dervish, but it did allow us to start getting experience with live explosives. Whilst working on the design for the Mark III, Karn thought of using standard van wheel bearing and suspension assemblies. Although he later abandoned the idea, he found that standard roller bearings would survive repeated shock loads. In January 1998, we were ready for the first simulated mine. These charges were laid by John Parks of Dell Explosives, who from the beginning has had a major influence on the development of the dervish. Here John is preparing a sequence of four mines. For safety, they're armed by a remote battery, and he places quartzite chippings to show up their locations. CNN television wanted to see a comparison of the effect that such a blast would have on a car and on the dervish. To guide the Mark III dervish, Stephen and Jimmy Drips developed a way of creating a movable net of high-frequency radio waves. The dervish would move in such a way that the signals received from fixed and synchronized radio transmitters were kept locked in phase. This control system resembled a command version of the old DECA navigator. The actual movement would be by skid steering, cyclical variation of the oil flow to the hydraulic wheel motors. This would need three independently controllable hydraulic circuits. And so the Mark III Dervish is fitted with the first of our wedding cake digital hydraulic pumps to go into service. During trials, the radio navigation and wheel command electronics are housed inside the plastic dustbin. We set up the radio net with a pair of transmitter aerials. In this first automatic guidance test, the distant navigation control computer commands the dervish to move anti-clockwise around the square wooden frame. The new spring-like wheels that we saw at the beginning didn't sink in, but they did clog up with mud. The pressure wouldn't have been enough to reliably detonate mines. Karn's latest flame cut wheels should fix this. Coordinates of dervish are minus 5.35. The microwave modules were specially made for the dervish on the island of Harris by Spectral Line Systems Limited. These latest tests in March 2000 brought together all the components of the new Mark III dervish. Radio net guidance, digital hydraulic wheel drive and improved blast proof frame and wheels. The dervish is being commanded by the computer in the caravan. The wireless safety box in Stephen's hand houses an emergency stop button. The development of the dervish is a good example of the multiple iteration process typical of engineering design. The next challenge will be to integrate it into a system rugged and reliable enough to clear mines anywhere in the world. <laughs>